we begin each classroom with the questionnaire invented by Marcel Proust and brought to perfection by my hero, Bernard Pivo. Clint, what is your favorite word? I it use tranquilo a lot because when things are getting kind of hectic around, I use it. I also use fromished a lot. <laughs> Which is? It means sort of f f f harried. Harried. What is your least favorite word? Ubiquitous. Ubiquitous? Yeah. I, I, I guess it's just too in. I don't, I don't like to be in. When it's in, I want to be out. And I understand. Nice <laughs> what turns you on? I, I think I'm turned on by, by people who uh, have a great sense of humor. What turns you off? Just cliche. <laughs> what is your favorite sound? A trumpet. What is your least favorite sound? I've never been a real rock guy. I'll tell you why. I, I went through the whole 60s and 70s, and I never really kind of got into it because it always seemed, if I wanted to hear that three chord change music, I, I'd much rather listen to rhythm and blues. It's a black person's art. I mean, it was invented by uh, the blues players and the people who came up out of the South, and, and it's those people. But when I hear the, the spin-offs, the sort of patty version of it all, it just, it just doesn't work for me. I have to kind of go for the real thing on it. What is your favorite curse word? <laughs> Jamf. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's J-A-M-F. Jamf. Is it an acronym? Does it, is it, does it's a jive ass mo <laughs> You can say it. <laughs> this, this was, uh, it used to be uh, Red Fox and Scatman Crothers, they used to use it all the time. It's a jive ass mo Fletcher, baby. And don't you forget it. Okay. What occupation other than yours would you like to undertake? If you go back and say, geez, if I'd only studied, you know, if I practice, 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 and, and you play in Carnegie Hall. Well, I was lucky enough to play in Carnegie Hall, and I never practiced, practice, practice. <laughs> what occupation would you absolutely not like to participate in? I would say politics, but I've already done that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I would say that I wouldn't want to go any further with it. Okay. Finally. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Welcome, and, and you're going to stay up here forever <laughs> and go nowhere else. And, and you've got 72 virgins all waiting for you. Hi, my name is Gina Mamer, and I'd like to know when you start looking at a script for a new role, how you approach the work? Well, first place, I, I look at this, the screenplay and try to just get uh, uh, as much understanding as I can about what the writer is intending and what the accomplishment is, what it's going to take to accomplish this thing. And then, then how do I fit in? Then I, then I kind of look through it and see, and see, and then what can I bring to it that's different? I've never thought of acting as really an intellectual art form. It, to me, it is a very organic sort of art form, and the best actors are people who can see to bring it up from inside. And, and the more you, sometimes the more you think about it, the worse it becomes. We talked about a little bit earlier just being, and, then, uh, and so then how, do I, how am I in this just being a person, a real person? And, um, and then how, then, and how do I make this ensemble better? Uh, you know, so it isn't just a one, it isn't just what's, what's good for me, it's what's good for the, how good the scene is depends on everybody in it. Ron Brosh, I'm a working actor here in L.A. Talking about uh, listening and silence and using words very sparingly, that to me was the first illumination of uh, the Clint Eastwood brand of, of character, which is very unique, very signature. How important do you believe it is for an actor to kind of hone in on what their unique signature is? 
I don't know how you'd come about discovering uh, uh, your, what is really right for you, but when I met listening, and, and I, I hate to get it into this thing where everybody thinks they've got to take a moment with every little thing that's uttered. There was a period in the 50s when everybody was doing that. Everybody was thinking and pondering. <laughs> and, but if you look at a picture like His Girl Friday, and, and you watch Rosalind Russell and uh, Cary Grant, and, and you see... Um, you see two people who are talking intensely, right at all on top of one another, but they're still listening. I mean, they're, they're not, you never catch them anticipating the other person's cues. And, and so their technique is so honed down that they can talk a million, a million miles an hour and, and still make it seem like a functioning deal. If you listen to, you watch Crossfire and stuff like that on TV, nobody's listening to anything. They're just, they're just, they're just kind of, and everybody's interrupting and just transmitting, just transmit, 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 and no receiver. And, uh, uh, but you can do it fast. Uh, watch His Girl Friday, and it's, uh, Howard Hawks at his best. It's up to you as young actors to, uh, to bring all that, uh, not be afraid to bring all that in to play. Thank you. Well, since the questions have had a certain nature, I thought you might like to meet a legendary agent. <laughs> that would be Mr. Lenny Hershan. Would you stand up for a moment, please, Lenny? <laughs> How long have you been associated with Clint? 40 years. I, I, was a, a, I was a young five-year-old actor. <laughs> he, I had a six-year-old agent. <laughs> How did you two become involved? Well, um, We're not involved. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a complex. That's for Dina's sake. Go on. Please. We got involved uh, during the Italian westerns, the spaghetti westerns, and... Uh, all the pictures since then. So listening to everything tonight uh, is like uh, seeing my own life flash in front of me. But I think uh, we should mention something else, Jim, about the fact that I started in New York and uh, I was casting a lot of television and I used to call a young actor in New York uh, for various jobs uh, on television and his name was James Lipton. <laughs> <laughs> I want it on the record, but Clint Eastwood and I have the same age. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Eastwood. My name is Sky Soleil. I was wondering if Clint Eastwood has ever been scared or intimidated by a piece. Afraid of nothing. <laughs> hey, it's... It's, it's just all cumulative. It's a lifetime of doing certain things, and you become confident about certain things, and, and you, you, you have a certain confidence. It's like an electrician who comes in has been doing it for many years has a lot more confidence in handling electrical things because it's his deal, and you can do it almost with his eyes closed. One thing about it, acting and directing, it's, you're a constant student, and I think that's the reason I'm still doing it at this stage in my life is you're just a constant student in every film you learn something. Every project you learn something new. You learn something new about people, you learn something new about actors, acting, about directing, and, every, and that's what makes it exciting. That's why I'm still doing it. And that, that's, uh, that's the great part of, of being an actor is that uh, it's a never-ending process. And you can, be, you can be 90 or 20 and you're, you're still you're learning. I mean, naturally at 90, you've, Probably, you've probably unfortunately forgotten a lot of <laughs> a lot of things, but it, it's uh, it's it's great. Uh, it, that's the fun of it all. It's great fun, and you're really lucky when you can make a living and manage to exist in a profession that's fun. <laughs>